guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today I'm going to do a quick example problem using the Edgeworth box and show you how to draw an Edgeworth box given a particular problem. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So in this problem, the way it's going to work is we've got two goods, good X and good Y, and we've got two people A and B. Endowments are given such that person A's endowment, he's got four of good X and eight of good Y. Person B has seven of good X and three of good Y. Utility for person A is going to be the min of x and y. Utility for person B is going to be x to the one half, y to the one half. And the goal here is to draw the Edgeworth box and find the Pareto optimal solution using the graph. And so if we just think a little more about the intuition, maybe we'll call these people Anna and Barb just instead of person A and person B. And so what they bring to the table, if we think about two tables, a table for good x and a table for good y, well, at the table for good x, there are 12 units total, because Anna brought 4 and Barb brought 8. The good y table, Anna brought 7, Barb brought 3 for a total of 10. And so if we think about these utility functions a little bit more, Anna has perfect complements utility, that's what that means. So we know that for her, x star is going to be equal to y star. For Barb, we know that u is x to the 1 half, y to the 1 half, so she weights x and y equally. And so we could expect that, again, she would also have x star equals y star just from Cobb Douglas instead of perfect complements. And so ultimately, this is the box we're going to draw. And the reason that, that I'm showing you this is because this is the drawing where I've had some time to do it. I'm going to go through the steps here in a second. It's probably not going to look as nice as it does here. And so I just want to show you sort of the nicely drawn version in case that's helpful. So remember that good x goes on the x-axis, and I've got 12 of good 1. Good 2 goes on the y-axis, and I've got 10. If I think of the endowment, I know that Anna started with 4 and 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so the endowment point is right here, and that means that if Anna has 7 of good 2, then the remaining 3 go to Barb, so Barb has 1, 2, 3, and again, if Anna starts with 4 and we've got 12, that means Barb must have started with 8, so she's got that 8, which is this distance right here, and so again, with the endowment point, there should only be one point on the box. Person A, or Anna, she has perfect complements, so we know that that looks like that L-shaped difference curve. So through the endowment, if she's got 4 and 8, that point is 4 and 4. And the indifference curve for Barb, it's just convex. It's a Cobb Douglas utility. It's drawn upside down, so it's going to look like this guy right here. And of course, the Pareto improvements are places in which both people are at least as well off as when they started, and one person's better off. So that's this shaded area here in green. So now that I've shown you the pretty picture, let's go through it together. So again, I've just set this box up. 12 on the x-axis, 10 on the y-axis. If I start with Anna, again, I'm going to say that the endowment point is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here's the endowment point right here. And again, I'm going to go, this is my indifference curve for Anna. And because she has 4 of x and x equals y, if she only has 4 of x, she doesn't care if she has more than 4 of good y. And similarly, if she has more than 4x, but she only has 4y, then, of course, she is only going to be just as happy as if she had 4 of each. So here's the indifference curve for Anna. What I would do if I were drawing this is I would actually flip my paper over when I draw Barb's indifference curve, because then I don't have to draw upside down. Of course, doing this with an iPad, I don't quite have that luxury. And so I'm just going to draw it upside down, something like this. Because, of course, my indifference curve is going to look something like this because I have Cobb Douglas utility. And so that's just the box sort of drawn step by step. Now, if I think about the contract curve in the core, the contract curve for Anna is going to be on this straight line where x equals y, approximately. So just pretend that that's x equals y. Now, of course, the core, or the part in which these people are actually going to agree to trade, is going to be in between their indifference curves because Anna's not going to agree to any trade that makes her worse than what she started with, and Bard is also not going to agree to any trade which makes her worse off than what she brought to the table. So the core is just going to be this part of it in purple right here. And so now if I think about the graphical solution to find the Pareto optimal point, well, we would just keep finding Pareto improvements all the way until we got to our x star, or to the point at which we couldn't make anyone better without making anyone worse. And so maybe for this case, it's this green dot x star, where both Anna and Barb are better off than what they started at. And again, x equals y for both those people. Okay, so I'm, this is just a graphical solution. I'm going to set up a secondary problem, which I'll do in a different video. 
where I'll also go through the math behind this. We'll use different utility functions. We'll go through finding equilibrium prices, equilibrium allocation, as well as the Pareto set, the Pareto optimal allocation. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. But if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.